need to know this. The Republican descent into the fast and furious twilight zone continues. Today, Republican Darrell Issa's House Oversight Committee voted to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt of Congress for not turning over DOJ documents related to the Fast and Furious program. That vote comes on the heels of the White House asserting executive privilege over those same documents that ISA is demanding, a move that President George W. Bush employed six times and President Clinton used 14 times. Fast and Furious was a program started by the Bush administration, originally named Wide Receiver, centered on selling guns in Mexico and then tracking those guns up to the high-level drug cartels. Ultimately, the program was abandoned after an American Border Patrol agent was killed in a shootout with suspected undocumented immigrants who were using fast and furious guns. And that's when Republicans began their witch hunt into Attorney General Eric Holder, alongside some truly bizarre conspiracy theories. Despite testifying eight times in front of Congress and handing over thousands of documents, Attorney General Holder was unable to satisfy Congressman Issa's witch hunt because he was unwilling to turn over documents that would have compromised ongoing live criminal investigations. In response to the contempt vote, Attorney General Holder issued a statement saying, this divisive action does not help us fix the problems that led the, to this operation or previous ones, and it does nothing to make any of our law enforcement agents safer. It is an election year tactic intended to distract attention and as a result has deflected critical resources from fulfilling what remains my top priority at the Department of Justice, protecting the American people. There's a bigger picture to all of this, and it has to do with right-wingers and their constant paranoia over gun rights and race. The president has finally put his foot down to stop the spread of a particularly bizarre Republican conspiracy theory, although in the process he may actually be fueling it. If you don't watch Fox News or listen to right-wing talk radio, you probably don't know anything about this. But let me lay it out for you. This is the conspiracy theory that, and in fact, on my radio show today, I had a number of people calling in and saying, yeah, in fact, I had a, a gun store owner down in Alabama call and say, here it is. Here's the theory. Two black guys, Attorney General Eric Holder and President Obama, want revenge for centuries of slavery and all the black people who died as a result of it. So they conspired to sell a bunch of guns to a bunch of brown guys down in Mexico in a law enforcement plan that was designed, it was set up to fail. It was set up to fail because it was set up so that those brown guys and the guns would make their way back to the United States and create such a massive gun and gang-based crime wave crisis that white Americans would cry out, say, hey, st please stop and take the guns. Keep in mind, this thing was set up in order to give the black guys, Holder and Obama, a rationalization to suspend the Second Amendment and start confiscating white people's guns and then round up all the white people into FEMA concentration camps because, like the Jews in Germany, the white people had lost their Second Amendment right to shoot back. You think that's crazy? Listen to Congressman Tim Wahlberg, a Republican member of Congress, laying out this bizarre conspiracy theory right here as he was interviewing Eric Holder. That this thing was, has gone wrong, was, was set up to go wrong, and, and frankly, I believe was set up to go wrong in order to deal with Second Amendment liberties of, of law-abiding citizens and pushing into a perception that it was the problem of the Second Amendment as opposed to law enforcement. And more importantly, Mr. Attorney General, your oversight of an agency, of a department, of individual leaders in that department uh, that have not been held accountable. Well, with all due respect, and I, and I mean this with great respect, uh, the notion that this was an operation set up to do something uh, to impinge upon the Second Amendment rights of uh, my fellow citizens is absurd. This conspiracy theory exists in what is essentially a bizarro parallel universe here in the United States where Fox hosts and other right-wing talk show hosts can simply say fast and furious and their watchers instantly know that what they're talking about is this black guy President Obama's secret plan to disarm white Americans the same way Hitler did before he started sending Jews off to Auschwitz. Only this time, Obama wants to send off people to the secret FEMA camps, and the people he wants to send off are poor and working class white people. You think I'm exaggerating? Now that you know the key to the code, and you just heard the congressman referring to this was an attempt to set up 
to, to suspend Second Amendment liberties for law-abiding people, code for white people. Check out the latest ad from a guy named Sam Wurzelbacher, who once lied to President Obama, said that his name was Joe, and then lied to say he was about to buy a plumbing business. Here's his new ad. In 1911, Turkey established gun control. From 1915 to 1917, 1.5 million Armenians, unable to defend themselves, were exterminated. In 1939, Germany established gun control. From 1939 to 1945, 6 million Jews and 7 million others, unable to defend themselves, were exterminated. I love America. First off, the Armenian genocide was largely committed under cover of war. In fact, most genocides are. In fact, virtually all genocides are. And the idea that people with guns are going to stop an army, I mean, an army with tanks, machine guns, grenades, planes, all the weapons, are, it's, a, it's absurd. Even here in the United States, it's absurd. Just ask David Koresh, who had literally hundreds of weapons at his Branch Davidian compound. Sam Wurzelbacher wants to avoid a genocide anywhere. He should join Thomas Jefferson and me in calling for an end to standing armies during times of peace. The German, German army had actually conquered the armies of country after country across Europe. The genocide was only possible because the German army had already defeated the armies of the other countries, at least the genocide outside of Germany, even though the Polish and French citizens were armed. If their own army couldn't hold off the German army, how would you expect the citizens to? Sam or Joe or whatever his name is, is living in a fantasy world. Finally, there have been no efforts by the Obama administration to take away anybody's guns. They haven't even touched the topic. They haven't even put it back into place common sense restrictions like the high capacity clips, like the one that crazy guy in Arizona used to try to kill Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Instead, in fact, Obama's let gun owners carry their weapons into national parks. This is all hysterical fear mongering, suggesting our nation's first black president is planning to take away guns from white people and it plays to the basest and most crass, racist strain in American politics. It's time to call it out and to call out Daryl Issa for feeding it.